Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at John chapter 1 verses 19 to 51. All of us at some point in our life will question, why am I here? What is my meaning, my purpose, my calling? This passage today in John shows us what the calling of John the Baptist was, what the calling of Jesus was, and what the calling of some of the first disciples were. And I think this in turn can help us to understand what our calling is. First, let's look at John's calling in verses 19 to 28. We start off with John's testimony with the priests and Levites who were sent by suspicious Jewish leaders. And they were wanting to know who he was and why he was here. Straight away, John is clear and confesses that he is not the Messiah. He disowns himself to be Christ and who at the time was expected quite a bit. He also shows that he is not Elijah who he came in the spirit and the power of. Also, that he is not the prophet to whom Moses said the Lord would raise up. He then goes on to answer the question of who he was by quoting Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. Almost as a command, but just as much what he feels he had also been called to be, by making straight the way of the Lord. Then, asked why he baptises water, he replies with how he is not worthy to even tie the Messiah's shoes. That's how important and special Christ is, and that John's purpose is only to make the way for the Lord so that he might be able to fulfill his purpose. Next, we're looking at John chapter 1, verses 29 to 34, looking at Jesus' calling. Here we have John's testimony of when he first saw Jesus coming towards him. John points Jesus out to be the Lamb of God, the first time this is used in the Bible, and it is in reference to Christ being the Paschal Lamb, later mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Christ was to be known here as the Lamb of God, who would one day be slain as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins, a foretelling to, uh, of what is to come, I think. John then continues his proclamation by calling Jesus the one who takes away the sins of the world, who had eagerly been expected. Here we are given a glimpse of what Jesus' calling would be, now and in the future, where he knew that his purpose would be to one day die on a crucifix so that others would be saved because of what he had done. Again, in verses 31 and 32, John understands the importance of Christ and how the way must be prepared for Jesus to undergo this calling. And so that we are told that John, by baptising with water, that this would help the Lamb of God to be revealed to Israel and the world. Who, going on into verse 33, is shown to be the one who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. Also in verse 34, we see that it says that I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. Jesus is God's chosen one. And he has become flesh for this purpose, so that he may, by the power of God, take away our sins. Finally, we're going to look at our calling in verses 35 to 51. John is again here at the same place, probably telling more people about the Messiah. And when we see him again, he sees Jesus and tells those who are looking around. He says, look, the Lamb of God. On hearing this, both John's disciples left him immediately and started following Jesus, literally walking straight after him. They acknowledged Jesus to be rabbi, which means teacher, and after he had asked them what they wanted, he welcomed them to come and see where he was staying so they could spend the day with him. Encouraged by what they had heard, one of them, Andrew, found his brother Simon to tell him that he had found the Messiah. And that is an absolutely incredible news to hear. On meeting Jesus, Simon is literally called by Jesus, by his new name, Peter, meaning rock. Moving on into verse 43, Philip is called by Jesus. And here, Jesus actually says to him, follow me. From this moment on, not only does Philip accompany Jesus, but he will go on through a process of learning to follow his every command, being a disciple of him. After Philip told Nathaniel, we have this confrontation between him and Jesus, where Nathaniel is saying, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And I think that's just absolutely incredible to hear. 
So finally, in following Christ, do we seek the favour of God and eternal life? He invites them to come without delay. Now is the accepted time, we hear in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. It is good for us to be where Christ is, wherever it be. Those who come to Christ must come with a fixed resolution to be firm and constant in him, like a stone, solid and steadfast. And it is by grace that they are so. The question put to us is this. Are we ready to accept the calling on our lives? Jesus, as, just as Jesus started calling the disciples here in this passage, so too are we called to follow him and in every aspect of our lives as well. The true nature of Christianity is in the following of Jesus, devoting ourselves to him and treading in his steps, knowing that he is the one who has taken away the sins of the world. So are we ready to follow him wholeheartedly and embrace our calling on our lives?